Operation, Heather. That's bored. Green light the yes, asset. Sir, I need more time. We have no time. Are you going to give that order or not? Sir, please. You are too naive to see the truth. There's no bringing in born. He will defend these police officers. Listen to police officers' commands, listen to what we tell you, and just stop. The nation needs to realize that when we tell you to do something, do it. And if you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're right, then the courts will figure it out. We don't get the ticket. We enforce it. But at the end of the day, each and every member should go home safe. Sometimes the use of force is necessary. You need to comply with the police officer the way the system was meant to be. Comply with the orders of police officers. Resisting arrest is a real and dangerous crime. Nonpartisan liberty for all. I'm your host, Dave Bourne, and it is Friday, April 28th, 2017, 7 o'clock, and we are coming to you live uh, for this special show, our special Friday show uh, that I kind of decided to do last minute here, so... Welcome to uh, Nonpartisan Liberty for All. I'm your host, Dave Bourne, and we're coming to you live, as always, from Las Vegas, Nevada. Thank you for tuning in to Nonpartisan Liberty for All on the Nonpartisan Liberty for All radio, uh, media and radio network, which now runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you can listen to the live stream on Spreaker.com and NonpartisanLibertyForAll.com and to the archives, including the new ones. Immediately following the show on Spreaker, YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and iTunes. On Nonpartisan Liberty for All, we promote self-ownership and the ideas of true freedom and liberty, meaning being able to do whatever you want as long as you respect the freedom of others and don't directly interfere with their freedom. Exposing government for what it is, a mafia based on extortion that rules without consent by threat of force and violence and we of course are always happy to hear from you you can reach us at 702-470-7664 that's 702-470-7664 or you can reach us via skype username nonpartisan liberty for all just send a friend request or you can check us out at nonpartisan liberty for all.com which has links to all of our social media Uh, our email address and all our contact information as well as original article slash blogs and other things there. So definitely check us out at nonpartisan liberty for all.com and go to our social media, uh, Facebook pages, et cetera, and make sure you like or subscribe to those. So I'm most likely going to do a shortened version of the show tonight Um, and probably do something similar in more detail in the future. But there are just so many fucking things where the government is controlling or having an effect on your life, and you don't even fucking know it or think about it or realize it, or some people don't even care. Um as I've talked about before, you have different types of people and you have people that know about it and are like me. I I don't think there's anybody like me. I think I'm an original, but I mean, when I say like me is, you know, they have that same kind of outlook on things uh, where they believe in freedom and in fighting back. And I'm not saying when I say fighting back, I'm, I don't mean literally, uh, fighting like physically per se, but standing up, speaking out, but whatever you have those people, which are far and few between at least compared to the amount of the population. Now I know tons of people that have, uh, shows, whether I know, 
them personally or know who, who they are or uh, know of their show. It, there's tons of them. Uh, when Well, I, I take that back. Be- there's tons of political shows like on YouTube and stuff like that, but they're not necessarily shows that have the same um, ideas towards freedom. But I still do know a lot of people that are active and and a lot of those though are in New Hampshire in part of so if you take out that New Hampshire group of people it really lowers the amount of people that I actually know but I, I see you know shows on uh, YouTube and and things that are um, dedicated to speaking out and about uh, about freedom and, and things like that and don't believe in government that, that's the biggest thing that's the biggest i think difference between me and um a lot of the independent political shows and there's a whole group of us it's not just me i'm not the only person who does a show that says they don't believe in government uh you have other shows out there but i'm saying me and and those people uh, uh, a, a group of us and um you still have freedom oriented shows but they still want government and 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 i don't get that and i'll talk about that later because it, th- this is i use alex jones all the time as a perfect example um although i don't see him as the same alex jones from a couple years ago i don't listen to him anymore i used to listen to him because I thought he did have have some really good information, and maybe he still does, but everything I see now is Trump this and Trump that, and Trump is great, and anybody who would put all their faith in and say the, some of the statements, I mean, how down he is with Trump about anybody, I don't care how good they are, um, is you can't... Um, that doesn't mean that everything they say is bullshit. No, I mean, there's still plenty of things that, or stories that they do that are legitimate and, and expose things. But I'm saying like, I, as far as my attitude towards him as, as a broadcaster, and I know there's the whole thing now they tried to spin it that he's fake news because he said he's a performance artist. And I think more what he meant was the ranting and raving type things. And the, you know, he's screaming into the, you know, he comes off like a crazy person that that's a character and whether it is or not, you know, you got to look at his side of it. So just to give a brief, uh, I didn't even want to get into this, but since we did, To give a brief uh, backstory here, um, I guess he's been divorced since 2015, and he's kept it quiet, and he's had custody of his kids since then, and his wife is filing for custody, so his wife is saying, well, look at this guy, and using, you know, clips from his show to say that he's nuts, so even if that really is him, which, you know, when you get caught up in the passion of a show, um, that doesn't mean that you act like that normally or when you're you know around your kids or whatever you're doing a show so um even if either way i would say that shit too um because he's trying to keep his kids but he said the way i understood it was more of the way he acts not what he's saying not the ideas you know, maybe a lot of the embellishments and the sometimes they do, you know, to make a point. I'm not talking about a story, but, you know, when he's just rambling on the air and, and makes a analogy or something or when they do uh, bits and stuff like that or whatever, which they have done before. So um, I think that's a bunch of bullshit. Now they're just using that to attack him but the whole point that I, I I've always made and it's pissed me off uh, for a while is the point that you have a guy who said 
supposedly uh, that, you know, it goes so much deeper than we even know and how bad it is and all of these things. And you say all of this shit, but on the same side, you say that there still should be a government. We need to get the right people in. And when somebody gets in there just as president, which doesn't even have control over a lot of things, although the president see in general has moved to take more control over the years, uh, the type of executive orders, which there shouldn't even be executive orders anyway, but the taking more control that they really don't have the the constitutional right to take has been happening. And I think that's ultimately what they want, but it doesn't matter who's in power. It's all the same, but for, for somebody to say all this shit about the government and then still think like, Oh, but if we get the right guy in, you know, or the right guys, or in this case, yeah, look, he, he, Trump gets in there and now it's like, Oh, well, everything's going to be great now, you know? And, and he didn't say everything's going to be great now, but you know, he's all excited about all these things are going to change and these things are going to change and has never realized that in, and this is my opinion, but you know, it's based on facts and shit that if you have that much corruption in government and the fact that power itself corrupts and it's not even that it's the whole, you don't have consent. You have people ruling over you and all of that. And he's never talked about it and never come out and said, you know, we just need to be able to control our own lives and get government out of it. But government is so bad, but we still need it. And it's just like, how the fuck? And there's a lot of people like that, that are criticizing government for how corrupt it is and how the new 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 world order and all of these things that they talk about yet well if we get the right people in there and whatever and no it's an oligarchy you have no say in government and the people it's all controlled even the people that admit it's all controlled that who's elected and who gets in there And they admit that, but still want a government. It just makes no sense. Now, if you don't believe that, it makes more sense. But they also don't think about or even talk about the whole idea of you being ruled over without your consent and that you're forced to abide by the laws of the system made up by politicians like somehow they have more authority than you based on nothing i mean but they think of it you know based on something they don't and i know they'll say well the will of the people or the majority of the people the majority cannot make decisions for the minority when it comes to life and being a human being, the majority of people do not have the right to make decisions for you. They just don't or society or things that don't affect them. The government has no right to do anything they do and no authority. They have a bunch of men with guns. That's why the only way you can have They say checks and balances, that they have checks and balances because they have different branches of government. That's bullshit. It's all government. The only way you can have a check and balance, and this wouldn't work because of the fact that the government still has the power they have, and they would eventually crack down on this or slowly take it away anyway if if we were able to somehow develop it, is the people have the same, and I've said this a million times, that the people have the same uh, amount of weapons and are organized uh, in the sense of like a militia that the police do. And they have, also, they have the right to 
you know, defend themselves and whatever. Because then government force would be met with force. Um, most of these people agree that government is all about, the, you know, is run at the barrel of a gun. It's all about the weapons. Otherwise, or, you know, if you don't have weapons, you have a whole bunch of people, you know, more people that are, but they don't have more people. So there you go. But more people that are willing to actually do something. So it's all about force and weapons and things like that. So the only way to have a balance of power, to have power in the hands of the people is not by writing some fucking law. It's a piece of paper. It can be broken. It's not by having three branches of government. It's all government. The only way to have a, a, a checks and balances is if the people have uh, are armed the way that, at minimum, the police are armed. Because what's going to happen is they're going to think twice before they violate people's rights. And ideally, you'd get to a point where hopefully 100%, but I I don't think that would happen, but 99% of the time, nothing would happen. It would be a standoff, but it would be like, you know, the Cold War with Russia and the United States. Nothing ever happened. They both had nuclear weapons and whatever. So they would know that, look, if we violate people's rights... You know, there is a check and balance. Now there's not. They can get away with whatever they want, do whatever they want. And it's it's all based on force. So if you run something based on force, and that's what government is based on, how are you going to have a check and balance on that force? By uh, force that can combat it. That's it. And I titled this show, I, I what did I title it real quick? Because I want to talk about a whole bunch of things, but it, just tired of the government and, and all my business. And I'm just tired of the fucking government, period. Because there are so many fucking things that they are involved in that affect your life that you don't even know about. And, and today I got a prescription. And this is the policy, uh, I guess, of the store supposedly but um, there's pressure and you know they the reasons why they come up with policies like this is because of the government putting pressure on them to be responsible for whatever but it's they're putting your they're taking your driver's license when you drop them off and when you pick them up and they're not just looking at your id to see your name they're taking your driver's license number and I'm sure putting it in a database and tracking, you know, all that information. So that now, you know, it's every they want everything that you do tracked. Everything. It is just getting so fucking ridiculous. And nobody wants to do shit. And You know, at some point, people, first of all, can't even admit that they're they live in a police state, number one. And if you can't even get to that point. And if you can't even get to the point where. Not that the government's just that the government's corrupt, but that the government is illegitimate. And that you live in a police state, at least getting to the point. I mean, if you're taking somebody who right now, you know, has faith in the government and the injustice system and most of those people, if you have faith in the injustice system, uh, you've probably never been arrested or been harassed by the police or any of that shit. Well, maybe you've been harassed by the police, but didn't get arrested or something or were one of the few who actually had a good um, encounter with the police. And if you did, you're probably like a really pretty girl or, you know, 
something like that. But, um, yeah, I'm just sick of the fucking, the fucking government. Uh, sh- straight up. Just now that doesn't mean anything now, probably because I, I know that I'm tracked. I know I'm on some kind of list and all of that shit and not because I'm important. It's just because, you know, I do a show and I say the things I say and they have a, a fusion center in Las Vegas and, you know, how many people in Las Vegas are saying what I'm saying? A thousand, a couple thousand. I mean, I don't know. So I know that not because I'm important, but anybody who's saying the shit that I'm saying is probably being tracked, even though I don't say anything violent or I, you know, I even come out and say and I say it because I really believe it. I mean, I don't believe in a revolution or taking over the government or going to war with the government or anything like that. I just want to be left alone and have the ability to go fucking live my life outside of government and them leaving me the fuck alone. And that's really it. Um, and the ability to defend myself. I don't believe in this... Uh, what would you call it pre what what they do preemptive strikes now if is if us as people thought the way the government did then there'd be a fucking war going on right now between the people and the government because the thing is that the police do believe almost in preemptive type uh things not the same way the government does where they, you know, bomb somebody because they think they this might happen. But what I mean is, you know, if you move a certain way or, you know, uh, look like you're reaching for something or have your hand in your pocket or whatever. I mean, they, they'll sh- just shoot you and legally they have the the quote unquote right. They don't have any rights, but the government... And their, um, you know, forces will defend them. So basically, the only thing that I've really said that's not that da- that's dangerous to the government, because everything I say is dangerous to the government. It's dangerous to the government, not physically, not in a sense, uh, in a violent way. It's dangerous because... It's dangerous to their uh, survival. And I don't mean the survival of the people, the individuals. I mean the survival of the institution. Now, the fact that no one really pays attention to me, it doesn't matter. So, I mean, I'm not... if, If I was somebody who had millions of listeners, there's no way I'd still be able to do this. The fact that, you know... On a good day, you know, maybe a hundred people will hear hear the show or something. On a real good day, um, you know, I've had a thousand listeners before. I mean, but that's that's at most. So the fact that you know it's a very small amount of people, I think that even still threatens them, but not enough to do anything. It's just like whatever. No one's gonna. It, there's not enough people that are listening to him anyway or that believe that so who gives a shit but if people actually thought the same way i did if if even 20 percent of the population i mean the government would be in serious fucking trouble and i don't mean they'd be even in trouble of getting physically hurt because they wouldn't or having riots or buildings burned down or nothing like that they would in the sense that their laws wouldn't be obeyed and there's nothing they'd be able to do about it. That's really it. But that is the most dangerous thing, the government, because they lose control over people. So that would be the, is one of the most dangerous things to government. That's why those ideas 
are way more dangerous than any ideas that Alex Jones fucking talks about or anybody who talks about the corruption or whatever. And I talk about that too. Um, so don't get me wrong. And that is a lot of times a way to get people to start thinking about government is, you know, you tell them about some of the things government has done and even show them the declassified documents and show them proof that, look, government has done this, government has done that. And then they start thinking about it because a a lot of people that don't know anything about about this will be in shock and oh my god so for a lot of people that brings them to the point of well government doesn't have a right but it doesn't necessarily do that and and that's unfortunately um an issue that Most people don't think about the concept. They think about just the corruption and think, well, if we had different people, they look at it on the people that are in there. They don't look at the institution and that the institution itself, you know, power corrupts. Same with the police. I don't think it matters who's in there. You're not going to, even people that come in there with good intentions, that's what's going to happen. You and, and it's been proven by experiments. You look at the Stanford prison experiment where you took uh, a, I believe, professor at Stanford. And I think even he, you know, got too into it and realized, like, what the fuck? Um, but you had a prison situation set up where they volunteered for a study. Uh, Half of them were guards, half of them were inmates and the things that they were doing to them. And he had to shut it down early because it, it got out of hand because it's the whole, that power over people corrupts. So you have that as well. Now you have people that are attracted to that specific position. And I think he randomly picked people to be on either side. It wasn't a, um, you know, he picked people based on their personalities because that would fuck up the whole study because the, 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 the whole point was is that the power, cor- that power corrupts. So obviously it does. Um, and there's other studies as well. You know, they, there's the Milgram ex- experiments where, um, uh, you know, not taking responsibility for your actions, basically, that if somebody says that they'll take responsibility, then you'll do something. And so in the Milgram experiments, it was pressing a button that shocked people, I think, if they got a question wrong or something like that, and they were saying, you know, let me out of here, whatever. And they had college students or volunteers that would be pressing the button. And then they had the doctor who would tell them, no, keep going. I take total responsibility. And they would keep going instead of saying like, what the fuck? Because they felt that they were not responsible that, well, he's taking responsibility for this. You know, it's fine. And I think no matter what your job is, if you do fucked up shit, now, it might not be as fucked up as that. That was torturing people. And they actually didn't really get tortured in reality. But, I mean, the premise of the experiment. But, you know, it shows how all of these institutions within the government get to how they are. and on. But on top of that, you have people that are attracted to power and control and ruling over people that are getting into these positions. And then you have, of course, the the billionaires on top that control a lot of this stuff anyway. So you have people that already have that personality that are controlling things. You know, in these experiments, these were just normal people that didn't necessarily even have that type of personality. Maybe some of them did, but, you know, 
they were just random people. So I'm going to play a quick clip, um, just like a four-minute clip about uh, self-ownership. And then when we come back, we'll talk about how a lot of these things affect your life. I'll go back through the concept of government because I can't talk about that enough. Um, And I just wish people would at least understand it and recognize it. Now, if you understand it and recognize it and still want there to be a government, then that's your opinion. That's whatever. I disagree, but at least you uh, recognize what government is. But I don't think there's any debating what government really is. Uh, To me, that's a fact. It is what it is. You support it because, you know, you say, well, this, uh, uh, they're a better gang than this gang over here. I don't know. You can look at it like you're in prison and you feel like you have to run with a gang. Although I watched a video today that said even if you're in prison, you don't have to be down with a gang and survive. That That's all bullshit. And I, I know somebody that was in prison that I think, you know, said pretty much the same thing. That all that shit that you hear about prison, a lot of it isn't even true. Anyway, um, play this clip and we'll be right back after this. Nonpartisan Liberty for All. Check us out, nonpartisanlibertyforall.com. Call in if you happen to be listening live. I know this was last minute. So uh, 702-470-7664, 702-470-7664, or send us a message on Skype at Nonpartisan Liberty for All is a contact name, and we can bring you on the air. Or there's also a chat room uh, as well if you want to ask a question or want me to address something or, you know, want to question me or whatever. So we'll be right back after this nonpartisan liberty for all dot com. To whom does your life belong? Who owns you? Most people instinctively answer, I own myself. But most people don't actually believe that. What does it mean to own something? It means that you and you alone have the right to decide what is done with that thing. What is yours you can use, you can trade, you can give away, you can destroy. So what does it mean to say you own yourself? It means that you and you alone have the right to decide what is done with your body and your mind, with your time and your energy. If someone else had the right to decide what is done with your body and your mind, your time and your energy, then he would be your owner and you would be his slave. So. Are you anyone's slave? Do you pay taxes? Do you feel obligated to obey whatever the politicians decide to call law? Do you imagine that someone else has the right to control you, to rule you? Do you vote? In every political election, you are asked to decide who you want owning you, but owning yourself is never one of the options offered. The only choice you are given is the choice of which politicians will coerce and control you by way of so-called regulation and legislation, and confiscate what you produce by way of taxation. Whoever wins, you will be extorted and dominated. When you vote, whether you win or not, you are accepting that someone else has the right to rule you. You are conceding the state's authority over you. You are agreeing that you are going to be someone's slave with the only question being which political master will own you. If you believe that you have an obligation to pay taxes, if you concede that it is up to someone else to decide how much of your earnings they will let you keep, then you are their slave. If you own yourself, you don't need the permission of anyone, any individual, any group, any collective, any country, any legislature, to run your own life make your own choices, and keep the fruits of your own labor. As long as the politicians see you voting, petitioning, protesting, and campaigning, begging for tax cuts, whining for different legislation, as long as they see you timidly obeying whatever commands they issue while begging them to change their so-called laws, then they know that they own you in mind and body. Writing or calling your congressman merely tells him that you still think he's important, 
that you still view him and his fellow parasites as authority and that you still think it's his choice whether to let you be free or not. As long as you play their games and legitimize their system, obeying their so-called laws and paying their so-called taxes, acting as if they are your rightful lords and masters, the tyrants know they have nothing to fear. The slave master doesn't mind his slaves pitifully begging for mercy, as long as they keep obeying and keep producing wealth for the master to steal. Those in power aren't worried about elections or petitions. What they do fear is that one day their victims will realize the truth, will stop believing in the divine right of politicians, will stop calling liars and crooks lawmakers, will stop calling the tyrants mercenaries law enforcers, will stop believing that anyone has the right to rule them, will stop imagining authority where there is none, will realize that they own themselves, and will stop bowing to the parasitical anti-human beast called government. If you own your time and effort, and the fruits of your labor, then stop asking nicely to be allowed to keep it. If you own yourself, then stop asking nicely for legislative permission to run your own life. If you actually believe in unalienable rights, in individual liberty, in freedom, then stop asking nicely for the sociopathic parasites to let you be free. For humanity to be free, people need to stop thinking, talking, and acting like slaves. Stop bowing to megalomaniacs. Stop paying tribute to sociopaths. Stop obeying political parasites. If you truly understand that you own yourself, then start acting like it. You are listening to Nonpartisan Liberty for All Radio with your host, Dave Bourne. Nonpartisan liberty for all, and we are back. I know we haven't, uh, I talked about this Tuesday, it was the first show that I did in April that we've been uh, kind of taking a hiatus, and I don't know how I'm going to end up scheduling with the scheduling and uh, you know how everything is going to turn out what i can say is that we are not going anywhere and i did uh mention this on tuesday as well that i'm going to continue to do shows i just don't know as far as the setup also we're running old shows uh 24 hours a day um seven days a week anyway so there's always something coming through on the live stream And there are plenty of old shows that are still relevant. A lot of the things I talk about, like tonight, you know, I don't think anything I really said has a lot to do with, uh, you know, current news or anything like that. So there's a lot of things or a lot of shows that, you know, stay relevant and you can listen to them and and talk about different concepts i try to do more of political philosophy i guess i guess i would call it i mean i'm not a expert philosopher or anything like that and i'm not claiming to be but i guess my more my political philosophy and talk about different things i mean i have talked a lot about news as well so i i, I try to be very versatile in as long as it it has to do with the idea of freedom and it sticks to our idea of you know promoting the ideas of of true freedom and liberty and self-ownership is really if you look at all the shows that we've done as long as it fits in there that's all that matters. So it, there's so many various topics that I've talked about. And I got to go in and change right now. I have a, uh, you know, list of shows that's just looping. And I want to go through and kind of do like a best of and put what I think are the most important shows in there and maybe loop that for a couple of weeks or a month or whatever um, while we're doing live shows. But I'm not going anywhere. 
if if anything, it, it may be less shows, um, but the network is not going anywhere. And I definitely want to do YouTube. I did one YouTube video. I did it on my phone, and it was kind of just a uh, – uh, something I was thinking about, and I'm like, you know what? Let me just do a video on this. It, I can't do it on it. The, the sound was great. The picture sucked because of the way the phone, you know, I did it from the straight position. I wonder if I do it the other way, you know, sideways, that it will fill the whole screen. Uh, I haven't tried it that way. Um, but I don't know. But ultimately, I don't want to do it from my phone. I want to do it from my uh, video camera that I have. And I have one. It's pretty nice, but now it's starting to get old. I think I bought it in 2010. So I wanted to use that and edit it and go through all of that stuff. Um, but it's just, you know, time constraints. And it was something I kind of on the spot and and whatever. But... It, those phones are pretty fucking good video and audio wise. I mean, shit. I remember when I was a kid, I had a VHS camera and the phones are better than those. I mean, if I would have had a technology now when I was a kid, maybe I would have became a fucking filmmaker because that's what I went to school for, at least my bachelor's degree. And then I have a master's um, in business, my MBA, but I just it was so hard to, uh, I had nothing to edit with. Um, the camera was good enough, but it was a VHS camera. It was really more the editing and the sound, you know, it was kind of shitty at times depending on, you know, what we were doing. But a lot of times, you know, you didn't hear <laughs> what we were saying. And, uh, but if I would have had a technology that, you know, kids growing up now, of course, there's all the negatives that we have regarding technology. And that's the only thing I really think has changed in the past, you know, what, 20, 30, 40 years. I don't think anything's changed with the plans uh, regarding government. And I think this goes back to the beginning of government or the police or you know, any of these things, it's just technology and the internet, um, as well as video, um, and people having cameras on their phone and, and live stream and all of this stuff. It's really the internet. And along with the, you know, technology of cameras being everywhere, um, that has changed things. So you can look at the positive side, of course, of technology and try to use it as much as you can for good, but there's the negative side with all these databases and them being able to track everything you do and, you know, have one big database that pulls in information from multiple databases. And, and as I've talked about before, this is something I'm very familiar with when it comes to databases. Um, it's kind of what I do um, in a sense. So storing all this information and they could have done some of this in the past as well it's not like they couldn't have stored all the information it would it would just be harder before the internet you know to pull information from all these different places into one place but they could have stored stored it all on computer and stuff like that uh years ago they just didn't uh they would store more stuff on paper and files and stuff like that and of course stuff gets lost or you got to request a file it's not easy easy to um you know get all the information together now it's like what's gonna happen for kids born now is basically your whole life is gonna be in a database you can put Excuse me. You can punch a key, you know, or you can bring up a file and that file will link to, you know, everything, your all your school records, all your 
medical records, prescriptions, um, anything about you, anything and everything, your DMV. um, And that's very scary. And of course, now with the facial recognition technology, and it's more than facial recognition, they have, um, what the fuck do they call it? It's escaping me right now, but where they can tell it to you, not, you can wear a mask and they can know the, from different like metrics or, uh, shit, biometrics. Um, like when they, when they take the size of your finger, I don't know if you've ever been to a place or done something where, you know, you use your, your finger and they're not taking your fingerprint but it's the biometrics it's like the shape of your finger and the length and all of these things so things are just going to get worse now with technology there's always the anti-technology and that's why i did a show about hackers and how important they are and to me you know they are very important um and i don't mean in hacking in and destroying databases but in getting information that we don't have access to and that's why the government you know goes after them so hard because they don't want people there's so much information that they don't want people to be able to get because they're doing all this shit that they're not telling you they're doing. So, you know, ultimately, I believe that we've gotten to a place where it's too far gone. There's no changing the system. For one, I've talked about how I... That's not how I would have built the government if I built the government. I wouldn't build a government, first of all. Um, But, you know, even if I did, it wouldn't be structured the way it's structured. Now, it's easy for me to look back and, you know, now to, you know, over, over 200 years ago and say, well, you know, you should have done this and this and that if you wanted to try to protect people's freedoms more. But there's nothing we can do about that at this point. And there's no changing things through the system. And I would say that is a fact. Now, maybe small things that are meaningless in in the big scheme of things. But when it comes down to it relating to freedom, you're not going to obtain a free society through the system. And in that, that clip, I think by uh, Josie, the outlaw, she talked about voting and asking permission. And You know, I don't criticize people who vote and say, well, you shouldn't vote or whatever. But there's definitely a point there that says, well, and and this is if you think about this, why do they campaign so much for people to vote? Why do they want people to get out and vote when they know that this shit is rigged anyway? Well, they want to give more legitimacy to what they're doing. And say, you know, people voted for this. People uh, supported this person or supported this whatever um, if it comes to ballot measures or something like that. So if nobody fucking voted or the amount of people that voted was so small and people started to try as much as possible to just ignore government. And that's where, you know. I I talk all the time about non-compliance and 
Larkin Rose did something called the Tiny Dot or whatever, and which was based on you know the amount of government employees and law enforcers and so-called rulers compared to the rest of the population, and it's nothing. So people could easily say, we're not doing this, we're not doing that. And that's where at least having enough, not force to use, but to defend yourself comes in because... The more that, you know, the police are totally militarized and there may be situations where you may have to defend yourself. But there, the difference between noncompliance and uh, what do you call it? Civil disobedience is that people that commit acts of civil disobedience, then <laughs> it's just it, I'm not laughing at what they do because. I think, you know, I respect them for it, but they're like, okay, I'm going to break your law. Now take me to jail. It just, I mean, it makes sense, and I've said this before, when it gets covered by the news, but it doesn't make sense if nobody knows about it. And really what's, uh, civil disobedience to me is, or not civil disobedience, but disobeying i mean it's like hey i'm not going to follow your law because i i don't you don't have the right to enforce your laws over me you have no authority over me so fuck your law and no i'm not going to let you kidnap me if you try to kidnap me i'm going to defend myself but saying that is like oh my god like people fucking Once you say something like that, people flip out. Like, I have a page. I've talked about this, like the noncompliance movement or something. And I mentioned something about self-defense. I don't even remember the name of it anymore. And I've had so many views, but barely any likes. It's like people are scared or just disagree because it's programmed into their head that police who are nothing but people who applied for a job and were hired <laughs> somehow have all these rights that the normal person doesn't have. I don't get it. I, I don't get why, you know, they think of police that way. Now, I understand why people don't do stuff like that because you'll probably get killed. So that I understand. But to not do something like that because you actually believe in the authority of the police and believe that, well, you know, police are like special. They have special rights and they're police. So they're above the normal person. So you don't, you have to obey them. Like based on what? So if you look at government, basically what government is you have a bunch of fucking politicians regular people making laws now a lot of those laws of course are influenced by the so called elite um, billionaires whatever that make laws who are these people that making that are making laws are they superheroes are they fucking geniuses are they no they're just whoever got the most votes whoever got the most money from their party you know whatever it's all rigged and pretty much anyway and what is a law a law means politicians decided that you know they got enough politicians to vote for something and usually they make deals to pass things anyway so that's it that's all laws have, uh, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, laws have nothing to do with morals. Laws have nothing to do with what's good or bad, nothing. Just politicians got together. But somehow people respect politicians and respect the law and respect the government. Why? 
what is government? How did the U.S. Gov- government get into power, for example? Well, to summarize it, obviously there was the Revolutionary War, the United States, which was not the United States, I guess, at that part. At that time, they were the colonies of England, said, we don't want England making our laws. It's funny how they <laughs> they were in that position and then did the same thing. Now, they did it differently. They didn't have a king and things like that. But so they went to war, whatever, won the war. Then you had the elites get together uh, about point, take about, you know, a thousand zeros and then put a one percent of the population, you know, 30 to 100 um, people. And that that were involved, I guess. I mean, really, you have the core people were probably like 10 but um as far as approving things and whatever so you had them come up with a government then you had them overthrow the government essentially and come up with another government being the constitution the first was the articles of confederation and they said well we feel and this is not what they, I'm not quoting anybody, but this is obviously what they did. So I'll say they said this, but whether they consciously said it or not, I mean, this is what they did. They created a government without the consent of the governed. They used implied consent and said, we're making the laws for these areas. We're creating a system on whose authority? Nobody's. We're saying we have authority to do this and we're implementing it. And then that was the foundation. And then more and more laws kept getting passed. Constitution had amendments. People made laws that violated the Constitution. Continue to make laws that violate the Constitution. Whatever. You you go through all these years of more laws and more laws and more government control and government get involved in this, get involved in that do whatever they want doesn't matter and you get to where we are now and that's a very uh quick i guess summary but if you go back to the beginning where is the authority who has authority see the point is is that No man has authority to rule over another man. Whether they claim it or not. And never did everybody agree to anything. If you look at the Constitution, you don't see 7 million fucking signatures. Because that was around the population of the colonies at that point. When a law gets passed, you don't see 320 million signatures. Now, granted, you have people that can't you know, infants and stuff like that. But fuck, even five-year-olds, you know, can probably write by then, I think. And I know they created a representative government, but they created all of this. Elite, rich, 
white men. And it has nothing to do with the fact that they were white, but they were. And the well, it does in that in the sense that they didn't look at everybody as equal. Black people weren't equal. So it, it does matter. Um, obviously. And women were not equal. Now that is irrelevant as far as I'm concerned now because to use well we weren't equal here as a reason to you know after a certain amount of time it's like i don't know you know and again not to say that um there's definitely still in effect and there's still racism and there's still a lot of these things but one of the things that I think people fail to realize is the power is concentrated with less than 1% and everybody else it doesn't matter what color you are. You're, you know, you may get treated worse the poorer you are or if you're poorer and uh black or something, you may get treated worse, but in general, if you want to generalize it, you have the rulers, the elite, the oligarchy and then everybody else who doesn't mean shit who have no say and who are slaves to the system that does whatever they want to them. So the government itself is illegitimate. Now, why is it illegitimate? Because it is illegitimate for anybody to rule over anybody else. Unless you consent and you you are not coerced into consenting and you fully understand it's called consideration when you enter a contract, you know, that you fully understand the contract. And why would anybody enter into that contract? Why would, you know, Larkin Rose does a great job of, of the, you know, talking about taxes where, you know, somebody coming to your door saying, oh, we're going to we're going to tax you. But we're going to decide what to use it for. It may help be something that helps you. It may not. I mean, if you enter into some agreement, who the fuck is going to going to do that? Who the, who the fuck is going to take their money and say, OK, I'll just give you this money. I don't know what the fuck you're going to use it for. And it might not matter to you that it doesn't benefit you because you may want to help other people. And that's fine. And that's what charities are for. It's like, hey, if you want to help homeless people, why do you have to, you know, be taxed for it? Or you want to help people that are poor that need food? You know, why can't you specifically help those people as opposed to the government just taking your money and then deciding how to, you know, distribute it and how to set it up and all of these things? And I like to, you know, direct. I mean, if I knew somebody that needed, and I think this is what would happen anyway, you know, if I knew somebody that was homeless that I was friends with or something, you know, and I had extra money to help them out, uh, you know, I'd help them out. Of course, I'm getting, you know, like 20 grand jacked by the government. You know, Chris Rock said it best Uh, I think he kind of changed since then but you know taxes he's like that's not you know you don't pay taxes he's like that's a jack (laughs) I forget what the line was it was like he's like you don't uh, I don't I don't remember I just remember him saying that that that's a jack that line um he's like the government takes taxes you know you don't have a choice you don't pay them voluntarily they just take it and pay for whatever they want 
which comes to the extortion part where they fucking extort you. So not only do they, of course, um, rule over you without your consent, but they extort you and then they use it for what they want. And, and it's a bottomless, it's like a bottomless pit. They will always have something more that they say they need. It will never stop. That's the whole thing is what people don't understand. It's like laws. They will never stop. How many laws do you fucking need? Because it's, it's just crazy. It will never stop. Nobody knows all the laws. It's impossible. There's so many laws. But it will never, ever stop. There will be more and more laws. There will be more and more things that they say, well, we need money for this. We need money for that. It's not because of inflation, like we need more money because this is going up or that is going up. And Now, I'm sure that probably factors into it to an extent, but it's also especially on a local level or on a state level, which is getting money from government as well, it's we found something else we need money for. But we need more of this. It's never enough. And we need more police. So they so so ten police, you know, can come to a, a, a traffic stop and sit around and basically do nothing. I mean it's ridiculous. So government itself has no right to tell you anything. Now, I do believe in what I call natural law, and I believe in the concept or idea of freedom, meaning that, you know, part of, freedom is not violating other people's freedom, which I, you know, say all the time that part of freedom is not interfering with other people's freedom, meaning, you know, murder, not murdering them or assaulting them or raping them or stealing their property or whatever. But the government wants to control. That's not good enough. And you look at government, which is like a corporation, and they act like a corporation. They want to get involved, and it just like a corporation expands into other areas, other businesses, the government wants to get involved in this and get involved in that and get involved in this. Create more government jobs, which means more tax money. They want to control what you put in your body. They want to be your parent. Hey, you can't do this. You can't do that. You can't just stand around on public property. You're loitering. You can't, you know, walk down the street dancing around. That's disorderly conduct. And they write open-ended laws on purpose. So they can interpret them any fucking way they want to. So not only do they do whatever they want, but they write laws so they can say they, well, legally we can do this. But it goes beyond that because the ultimate goal of government, the ultimate goal, at least of the U S government, as opposed to dictatorships and, you know, communist regimes and, and things like that is they want to brainwash you enough and to shape your mind enough that you'll be asking them to do these things. And they have, and people do. They have mind-fucked people so bad where they're asking the government for this stuff. 
Now, part of it, the majority of it's based on lies. Like terrorism. But they have, you know, fear is something that they love. They love to instill fear in people. Why can't we live as a society where you can do whatever you want as long as you don't affect anybody else's freedom? Why is that? And don't you as a human being have the right to live your life any way you want if you're not, and I say directly because no one has a right to your life. I'm sorry, your parents have no right to your life, your spouse, your kids, nobody. You have the right to make fucked up decisions if you want, as long as you're not directly affecting somebody. And when I mean directly affecting, again, it doesn't mean that they, they're depressed or they're crying or they're upset because you made a decision. It's you actually directly interfering with their freedom by inhibiting them to do something that they want to do or that they have done when it comes to property, like they've bought something and, you know, that's their property, their ownership, interfering with their ownership, whether it's of self or of property. Those are the only things that are crimes. But you have the whole business of law enforcement and jails and all of that. So know that, I mean, the police have no authority. And it's funny to watch cops and have them say, I gave you a lawful order. A law doesn't mean anything. A law doesn't mean shit. And a law doesn't mean shit to me neither. And that, whatever, can get me in trouble. But I have the freedom of speech to fucking say that. And I, and my freedom of speech, it doesn't come from your fucking constitution. And I say your constitution because I didn't write the fucking thing. It comes from the fact that I'm a human being. I'm a person. And it doesn't come from the fact of my race or my religion or my whatever, neither. Just the fact that I'm a human being that's self-aware. The only reason that animals don't have all the same rights, and I, I think they have some rights as a living organism, and I don't want to get into, well, trees are alive too, and well, okay, now let's not get ridiculous. But... If you can comprehend the concept of freedom, then you have the right to be free. And I guess there's uh, exceptions to that. I'm thinking of mentally... It depends how mentally ill somebody is because that's very subjective, but in general. So, you know, a dog can't really, as far as we know, I guess, um, I mean, I guess they understand the difference between, you know, we have a dog and at night we put it in the crate and, you know, being in the crate and not being in the crate, they understand I'm in a crate, but they don't understand the concept of being free. Being free does not just mean that you can, you know, go outside when you want or choose your own job or, you know, it goes beyond that. And how people can just look at, you have the CIA tracking people, uh, collecting data, building profiles on people. And we don't even know what we're they're doing with it, first of all. And regarding Snowden, we never had 
the NSA come out and admit exactly what they're doing, all the programs that they have, and all this illegal bullshit that they're doing. Or stop it, for that matter. Because they feel that they have the right to do it. Which they don't. But government can just do whatever they want. You haven't had the CIA come out and do that. Now, they say, well, it will jeopardize. It, they always want to give a bullshit reason. It, it will jeopardize, um, you know, we'll have more terrorist attacks because they'll know how we're spying on them and whatever. And, again, you can go back to it's attributed to Franklin, but who knows the if whoever gives up, uh, and I'm paraphrasing, you know, freedom for security deserves neither. And it's a matter of priorities. However, the priorities have been manipulated as well. The same way people have been brainwashed to accept certain things or think certain things. So think about something that you'd be like in shock about. Like your girlfriend just cheated on you and you're like, oh my God, I never, and she's not a whore (laughs) or something. And you know, you're like in shock and surprised and whatever. And, you know, when it comes to government, government has done all these things that make people have that reaction to certain stuff like, oh, you can, um, like track phones, for example. I guarantee you a lot of people would be like, Oh my God, you can actually get a track phone without uh, giving them your name, but you could be a terrorist. And if people aren't saying that, they will be, you know, or you could get the, because most things you can't get anymore, like you can't get a bank, bank account. Now, why can't you get an anonymous a bank bank account? Why, why shouldn't you be able to get an anonymous bank account if you want? The only thing would be is if somehow you lose the things uh, that, I mean, you you could come up with some way to recover stuff that doesn't, I guess, um, have to do with your identity, maybe. But, you know, there's no reason why you, you can't have an anonymous bank account. They issue a debit card. Everything's all password um, operated and or email and you could even set it up where you recover it through email or something. You know, now emails even there are anonymous emails. I have an anonymous email. But 99 percent of emails now, they want your phone number to verify it before you can even sign up for email. And it was never like that. Or they want another email address. Which you have to sign up and have (laughs) put your phone number in there. Because your phone number is connected to your name. So even emails want to be linked to you. So you can't do anything or have anything anonymous. Because you could be a terrorist. You could be a drug dealer. Which... That shouldn't matter, first of all, because all drugs should be legal. The government has no right or authority to tell you what you should put in your body, what you can put in your body, and what you can possess. Although they claim that right. But even if you took that out of it, now they have terrorism. So they can use drugs. You know, I've talked about this before. The war on drugs goes way beyond drugs themselves. Because what the war on drugs did, other than never mind the using drugs part, the uh, having drugs on you, 
the the crimes part of it. What it did was it allowed the police, it gave them more reasons to be able to harass you, to search your car, to do all these things. Because along with filling jails and generating what they'll call revenue, police are there as a, what would you call it? As disciplinarians in a way to teach you discipline. That's why they act the way they act and they're trained to act that way. That and a lot of them really are assholes who have that uh, power trip. Because in reality, the police are supposed to be there to help you. And they should have a customer service aspect to them. Even if you're being an asshole to them, they should be nice to you. Until, you know, okay, if you hit them or something. But if they pull you over and you have an attitude, what do they expect? First of all, they believe that they have the right to pull you over because the government says they have the right to pull you over. I don't believe they have the right to pull you over, especially for ridiculous things that didn't threaten anybody or whatever. I mean, now, if somebody is driving in a way that literally is putting people in danger, I still don't believe the police have the right to pull you over, but I believe that something needs to be done about that situation, Um, how you handle that in a totally free society is something I'd have to think about. But for the most part, when police pull you over, we'll say, and this is just an estimate, more than less. We'll say 70% or probably 80%. I mean, if you're speeding 10 miles over or 20 miles over, or if you run a red light or if you run a stop sign, a lot of times I, 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 you know, I'll do it when it's safe if there's nobody there. What the fuck am I going to sit at a stop sign for if there's nobody there? What am I going to sit at a red light for if there's nobody there? So if I know it's safe and it's a certain type of intersection, you know, there's certain type of intersections I would never re- think about running a red light because it's just, um, unless it, it be, well, because it is Vegas, but unless it's like a Wednesday night at, you know, three in the morning and there's literally nobody on the road and you're able to see that or something. Uh, but it would all be um, in a safe environment. It would never be, you know, unless I just accidentally did it or something, but my my point being, and even pulling somebody over, what is that doing? So, I mean, they don't pull people over because of safety, because they give a shit about safety. That's what they're told to tell you. And they give the, the spiel about, you know, well, this could have happened and we have car accidents. And, 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 and some people are stupid enough to actually believe what they're saying. But really, they're pulling you over. And former cops have, you know, talked about this and admitted this. That's the initiation or not initiation, but uh, to make that initial contact. It gives them a reason to make that initial contact, to move forward, to find something else. And usually it's, it's drugs because what else do they got? So if drugs were legal... And guns were totally legal, and I talked about this before. Really, they wouldn't really have much. And it's also some of the time just to give a ticket to get money. But that's not usually their main goal. That's part of it, because they can do that too. But there's way more money in getting you in a court, and it also 
looks at, hey, we need a bigger budget next year. Look at all these people that, you know, are in jail or going to court or whatever. We need to hire more employees. So it's it's just the whole thing is just ridiculous. And what government does, and this is how government really controls your life in ways that you don't even think of or or recognize, is they regulate all of these industries very highly that you cannot live without. So something like the medical industry and pharmaceuticals and things like that, are heavily regulated by the government. And from an information standpoint now, especially doctors, it's like doctors are scared to prescribe certain drugs now because they're heavily regulating them and heavily watching them and every little thing they do. So instead of the government having to directly monitor that, It's like they're appointing an overseer over you. You know, all of these these things are overseers, doctors and hospitals, fucking attorneys even. And, you know, hopefully you go through life where you don't need an attorney. But if it's a criminal matter, you know, the lawyer... I don't know. Lawyers are one they had they have to adhere to all of this shit that's regulated and most of them if they work in a certain area uh which most of them do they know the judges, they know the district attorneys and city attorneys and they know that they have to deal with them on a daily basis or a you know reoccurring basis so they they're not looking out for your best interest and it, it goes a lot deeper than that when it, when you, when you get into the whole fucking injustice system it's just ridiculous it's a ridiculous system the way it works is totally rigged against the people on every level it especially the criminal um side of it And the the family courts are pretty bad. You know, civil lawsuits, I I don't know as much about them. But, you know, you have people suing individuals at least, so it's not as uh, controlled. But when you're dealing with, you know, it depends who you're suing. You know, you're suing these big corporations or something like that and or you're suing the government or, you know, then there's that bias there. It depends on who you are or who you're suing or who's suing you. So and then, of course, you have CPS, social services. They are trying to get more involved that you have the schools which are connected to social services and the CPS and they're looking more at your kids. They're collecting all this data and they're getting more involved in your kid's life. Um, In one country there was talk about actually appointing somebody from the government to kind of oversee your parenting uh, for a certain I think the first five years, I forget what country that was. It might've been Germany or something, but that's, I think where that's going, where, you know, whether there's an issue or not, the government is going to have an agency that oversees that they almost don't need it because of the schools. That's why everybody take their kids out of schools because they have the schools to do that for them. Just like, they have doctors, you know, to do a lot of things for them too. Somehow they give doctors the right to make the decision whether you need this medication or not. And that's a lot of power to give to a fucking doctor. 
And I'm sorry, with all the information out there right now, you know, it's easy to get information about something and you make that choice whether you want to take it or not. And if you want to go to a doctor to get advice, that's fine as well. But if you want something, you should be able to get it. Of course, I think all drugs should be legal no matter what. And that includes, you know, prescription should totally go away, of course. And, you know, doctors control this whole thing. And it's really fucked up. So you have all these parts of government that either do have effect or that indirectly that oversee basically everything. I mean, every industry is regulated to a certain extent. Now, how much it's regulated, you know, affects your life depends. But I think when it comes, definitely when it comes to doctors and hospitals and pharmacies, um, because they're getting very involved with even pharmacies too, because they're saying, well, you need to look for these signs and whatever. If somebody's trying to get a prescription, you know, for this, it's just ridiculous. It's crazy because we know what the real motivation is because you have the CIA bringing in fucking plane loads of cocaine, but they're worried about, you know, people getting addicted to prescription drugs or misusing them or whatever. Like they care about the people. No, they don't. It's control. It's control. And on top of it, it's, if you don't obey that, then they can go after you and they can put, you know, charge you with a, a crime or whatever. And it's just, it it's crazy because none of it, nothing government says they do. They do for the reason that they say. Nothing. But people buy into it. And I'm just tired of the bullshit. And more importantly, I'm tired of people that are too fucking stupid or ignorant. You know, I I don't know. I should be more... uh, understanding in a way but it's just like you know even before I got to the point that I didn't believe in government I was never part of a political party I always thought all drugs should be legal I I didn't like government getting involved in your fucking life in any aspect whether it was something that would be considered on the liberal side or on the conservative side you know it's I thought gun there should be no restrictions on guns, there should be no restrictions on drugs. I mean, police I pretty much thought shouldn't have be able to pull you over. I didn't pretty much I didn't think police should be able to pull you over. I always thought they had too much power and that should be uh dealt with. And so I mean, I always had these ideas and you know, just naturally they of course when I thought more and more about it and, and was exposed to other things, it's like, you know, you come to the logical conclusion, like, well, why do they? And, but most people don't even have those ideas. And they just live in this fucking bubble and it's, it's frustrating. It really is. Because what the fuck do you care what I do? In all seriousness, 
what do you care what I do as long as I don't hurt you physically in any way? You know, that includes kill you, rape you, uh, assault you. And I don't um, do anything to your property. So, besides that, what the fuck do you care what I do? Now, I know people can say, well, if you're doing something that's reckless, that could hurt somebody. Well, now you're getting into pre-crime, and it really depends what it is. But, you know, that aside, because that would have to be specific situations. You know, again, like, what do you care what I do? If I do a bunch of drugs, what do you care? Now, if I break in your house, okay, fine. But what the government's doing is by making drugs illegal, the price goes way up. And, of course, you have people that can't afford them and they rob people, they, you know, or prostitute themselves. Or, I mean, they It makes no sense, and people can't even see that, drugs being illegal. Because if they were legal, all of these issues, you know, it wouldn't be perfect. There's no utopian or perfect situation, but it would make things a whole lot better in so many areas, whether it's crime, whether it's, you know, people feeling ashamed, getting help, um, whatever it may be, it will be a positive. It's totally a positive thing if you look at the facts. Now, I'm under the, uh, the way I feel is that it doesn't matter. It's all about freedom. So even if you say making drugs legal would make things worse, I'd still say they should be legal because government has no authority. They have no right to tell somebody what to put in their body, what to possess on them, how to run their business, what businesses they can be involved in, all, all of these things. So that's why... When it comes to that, it it's funny. You look at all these things and legalizing all of these things. It's always not just f- f- making sense from a freedom standpoint. It makes sense from a st- statistical standpoint. Guns as well to me it when you look at it now guns is a little different because you can argue different things but i don't think there should be any restrictions on guns period no background checks no nothing and you have the right to possess what you want self defense is one of the most important rights that exist But what I'm saying is, you know, factually, you look at the amount of homicides and the number going down and you look at the the states with the strictest gun laws and how they have higher murders and, you know, it's it more it's more on the side that it supports less gun restrictions than more and it's the same with drugs and drugs uh unbelievably if you look at the facts does that there is so many more positives to having it legal than illegal and the whole thing is when people talk about when people talk about it, they act like people can't get drugs now. It's funny to hear people talking about, you know, 
legalizing drugs that want them to be illegal because they talk like if they don't exist now. Like, oh, if we legalize them, they'd all of a sudden be there, but uh, they're not there now. You can't get them. It's just crazy. So I wanted to just do a a brief show tonight. I haven't been doing a lot, and this was kind of a last-minute thing. And just talk about a lot of the things that I've been thinking about. And, you know, come out and do another show because I haven't in a while. And talk about some of these things. And that's really what the show is about. The ultimate goal uh, is... And, you know, convincing people by facts. I mean, the the truth is on our side in this. Because the government doesn't have authority. The government does extort from people. The government doesn't have consent. And and self-ownership is a huge thing. You own yourself. Otherwise, you know, if you own yourself then shouldn't you be able to possess what you want? Shouldn't you be able to put what you want in your body? And if you're talking about, well, if you allow people to have this or have that, they could do this or they could do that. Now you're talking about freedom versus security. You're talking about, and most people, it wouldn't really change. That's the whole other thing that people think, like because something's legal all of a sudden, you know, uh, if there were no restrictions on guns, all of a sudden everyone's going to go run out and get a gun or they'd actually be probably less because people wouldn't worry about their rights being taken away. So they'd, they'd wait on gun purchases um, as opposed to every time there's, you know, fear that they're going to pass a bill, uh, people run out and, you know, buy a bunch of guns. And this is even on a state level now that, because they couldn't do it on a federal level. Now you have Bloomberg, you know, trying to do it on a state level. So basically, you know, the truth is on our side. This, it's a fact. And if you own yourself, you know, you should be able to do all these things. And every anything else is, is pre-crime. And I don't believe, pre-crime is not freedom to you know otherwise why not just let the police the police check your house anytime they want or do this or do that because you know what there could be people right now building bombs in their houses um there could be terrorists organizing they could be meeting in basements somewhere you know like that's the price of freedom is that anything could happen at any time and if you look at it Obviously not, you know, even through history, not much has happened based on the amount of freedom people have. Because you know what? People are not, the majority of people are not like that. Now, I say the majority of people, a lot of people are assholes. But, you know, they'll like fuck you over, you know, as a friend or portray your trust or something like that for like stupid shit. But when it comes to killing people or just uh, assaulting people for no reason or all of these things, it's just, it doesn't happen with the majority of people. It just doesn't. You look at crime statistics. I mean, look at crime statistics throughout history. And it's just the fact that when you try to ban something, when you try to get rid of something, the more people want it. It's that allure of doing something bad. That, and on top of that, they don't even know anything about drugs. They don't know what drugs really do. And you can't uh, really... um, look at it from the standpoint of 
if you look at it the standpoint of what the drugs actually are if they put them together the way they should be meaning that you know you have street chemists that you know don't know anything about chemistry doing this shit and adding shit and whatever making it more dangerous but if you had pharmaceutical companies you know putting these drugs together and then look at the effects that they have on on that and uh, i always tell people to go look up uh, dr carl hart who has studied uh, drugs he's a neuro- neurologist who studied the effects of drugs for 25 years and a lot of it's bullshit that people have been saying um as far as how bad drugs are and it makes sense because it's propaganda yet they want people to do drugs because they want to dump people down but at the same time they or not necessarily dumb people down but be out of it they want people to do you know hard drugs or uh be drug addicts as opposed to you know the majority of people that use drugs that are our, uh, functional users but they want to be able to arrest them if they feel like it so they they want both sides they want to be able to sell drugs to people via the CIA but at the same time they want to be able to arrest people so they got both ends of a business in a way and it's it, which makes it even more fucked up But I'm just asking people to open their mind and look at shit because it is going to be, it probably is too late already. But we're, we're past this, you know, oh, America's going to be a police state where there's not going to be any freedom. We're past it. It is a police state. You don't have freedom. You can't tell me you have freedom when you're being watched and all your data is being collected, all your information, and you could be spied on at any time through your computer, through your phone. And that's just one thing that they do. And that's the the whole bottom line is it's not draining the swamps like they say because it's the institution. And you can't have people ruling over others. People aren't meant to be ruled over. People are born free people to choose to live their lives how they please as long as they don't interfere with somebody else's freedom. And that's it. That's bottom line. So the government violates your rights. Even though it's a law, it's still a violation of your rights. If you're arrested for drugs, they're violating your rights. If they're searching you, they're violating their rights. Even though the law might say This is okay. They have no authority to make laws. You can't give authority to somebody over somebody else. Who gave them authority? The person down the street or my neighbor can't give my other neighbor authority to tax me. Or to tell me what to do. And I'm just using that as a, as a, on a lower level. That's the same thing. It's like the whole country can't give the government the authority to tell me what to do. You're just talking on a bigger scale. So that's all we have for tonight. 
I really appreciate everybody who tuned in or who listens on uh, to the archive. Um, again, still working out exactly the schedule and and um, as far as YouTube and getting doing more YouTube videos and definitely doing more articles, all things I need to do. So, but I don't plan on going anywhere. This is something that I it's only going to get worse. And I will spend the rest of my life, if I have to, fighting this, fighting for freedom. And I don't mean, that that doesn't mean literally, you know, fighting, like, with my fist or weapons or whatever. It just means standing up, speaking out, and whatever. And what it comes to is what it comes to. You know, everybody has their lines. And there's only so much, you know, people can take. Hopefully it won't get to that point. But I I, I don't know what is going to happen in the future. I do know that I want to be able to at least tell my kids that I did something. That, yeah, maybe I could have done more. Maybe, I don't know. But I put myself out there. And... I spoke from my heart and spoke for what I believe in. And regardless what anybody says about me, fuckheads from the past or whatever, you know, I've always been a real person, unlike some people I know. And I speak from the heart and I speak passionately And I do this because I believe in freedom for all people. And I don't like what I see. So thanks again, everybody. And have a great weekend. He will defend his police officers. Listen to police officers' commands, listen to what we tell you, and just stop. The nation needs to realize that when we tell you to do something, do it. And if you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're right, then the courts will figure it out.